the numbers are, are rolling. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Fake it till you make it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, 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 um, uh, 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 a beloved, beloved brother sent me something. Uh, we're not going to talk about that t today. Um, uh, we're not. That will be addressed, brother. <laughs> that that can't pass that up. But our dear brother sent me this video, just a short one. We're not going to touch on that today. Uh, that that will be addressed. <laughs> Where it was uh, a Kennedy, uh, a Kennedy is in that, and um, just total, just total philosophy, philosophy and nonsense. But a uh, guy mentioned Carl Jung, warning. But yeah, fake it till you make it. <laughs> We're gonna, you know we get to this. I just can't help but laugh at that. It's not funny, but fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. Like I said, brother, thank you. For, where do you get to? Where do you find this stuff sometimes, brother? <laughs> wow. Woo. <laughs> but anyway, um, <clears throat> that will be addressed, brother. That 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 kind of has to. It's not going to be today because um, please get your authorized version of scriptures, and please read a lot uh, today. Today you're going to need one of these. A ribbon marker if you got it or a piece of paper or something to keep your place because today we're going to be looking at today is the 21st we're going to be reading out of the 21st proverb today and we are going to have some expository today yes we are so you're gonna kind of want to have your ribbon marker here to um, to go back to okay Please get the authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me. Okay? This is for your benefit that you read along with me. I make mistakes. I go too fast sometimes and get, you know, stumble over my tongue. Okay? You need to follow along with me. You need to read along with me. And also, too, you need to see it for yourself. Okay? You, you do. You need to be a Berean. Searching the scriptures daily. Whether these things be so. We're actually going to be looking at that verse today. Okay? So, please, read along with me. Alright? Read along with me. Word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Okay? Proverbs 21. Let's just get right at it. We are going to basically concentrate on verses 1 under verse 7, but then we will end the video uh, with verses 27 on to the close. Okay? Read this on your own time, too. Pause the video and read. Today's the 21st. Okay? The king's heart, verse 1, we're reading on to verse 7 and we're going to have some stops along the way. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Now, in a present tense, that doesn't mean that every ruler's heart is in the hand of the Lord, because not every heart truly belongs unto the Lord. Okay, alright, remember, this is written under the law. In a totally different dispensation. The rulers, the kings, the leaders and stuff are established by God. Yes, they are. Today, more so for judgment because I do not believe at all that there is one saint in any political office on God's earth. I don't believe that at all. If there were, they ain't going to last long. Okay? Because God is contrary to this world. All right? Verse 2, every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth, that means to think on, the hearts. See how verses 1 and 2 coincide with each other? Okay? 
A king whose heart belongs unto the Lord. Oh, so many of these Christians say, well, my God knows my heart. And yes, he does. It's deceitful and desperately wicked. Okay? Again, people, watch out for these Christians who will try to justify sin by saying, well, God knows my heart. Okay? You run away from these guys. Okay? All right? But, see, this also talks about something that free grace uh, people avoid like the plague. Self-judgment. Judgment altogether. But it's funny. To defend themselves, they say, don't judge me. But yet, they judge the saints by a standard of their own construct. Okay? But every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Dear brother, you got to remember too, all things are lawful for us. I, I understand your anger, brother. I understand your anger. Okay? Certain people out there will do anything to justify their own petty desires, even yoking themselves up with the Vatican for one day in a certain month. All right? The truth is out there, brother, if they don't want to hear it. And hey, I, I get it. I get worked up about that too. But we do have to understand, brother, with a lot of these people, when it comes to whatever reason, a lot of it is sadism, man. They grow up with it and they never grow out of it. <laughs> and they seek to justify it. And man seeking to justify himself. There, the end justifies the means. There is no depth that someone will reach where they say, okay, that's too far. When you got one of these people who are seeking to justify themselves, especially when they try to go to the authorized version, um, th there is the, the depth of the depravity that they will go to to justify themselves is unfathomable to the saint. Keep that in mind. Verse 3. And right here. Now look at verse 2. Look at verse 1 and verse 2. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Okay? Every heart of the rulers and presidents today isn't in the hand of the Lord, meaning they don't have, it doesn't belong to the Lord. Okay? Alright? But the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water... He turneth it with he turneth it whithersoever he will. The Lord will guide you. Not at gunpoint, but the Lord will guide you. Okay? Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. The Lord guiding you for someone whose heart belongs to the Lord. Not the Christian who says, God knows my heart. Anybody who says that to you, dear friend, is seeking to justify themselves, not God. Okay? They'll get really cute with that. But at the end of the day, the end justifies the means. What is that? They're justifying themselves. Be aware of that. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. Verse 3. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. And these guys get cute. And they'll come to this very thing and it's like, well, see, it was by grace through faith under the law. You are an idiot. That's something stupid like Jack Smack would say. That guy's stupid. But anyway, Psalm 51, verses 16 and 17. See, why was someone following the law? We have evidence in Scripture, uh, what was it, Ahab, who did right by the law and received mercy but his heart wasn't in it because the law is not a faith. What, what the law is right here, okay? The law is right here, all right. In scripture, you got to remember that, okay? But for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, 
And, uh, and finding out that you can't do anything to save yourself and that you're going down on a sinking submarine, okay? Brokenness. Brokenness. Okay? A broken and contrite heart. Contrite. Manning up. Taking responsibility. Refusing to hide under the umbrella that free grace gives you. Well, we're all sinners. Skirting personal accountability. Okay? That's how they get away from that. Number one, they, don't re they, they start in a certain part in Romans chapter 3, but they omit what leads someone to that point, which is a requirement, which is a necessity. A broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. And see, having a broken and contrite heart will lead to fear. Why? Because everything is taken out of your hand. Uh, in verses 1 on to verse 4 in Psalm 51, this is the closest you're going to get to a sinner's prayer in the Scripture. This is the closest that you're going to get. Okay, The prayer of Manasseh in the Apocrypha, it sounds good. Okay, But it was written um, uh, post-death, burial, and resurrection. Well, Rome tells you that it was uh, pre that, no, no. It was written in the style of someone. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, no. All right. Prayer of Manasseh sounds good. It's a good read. It's not scripture. Okay? But, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. See, he wasn't hiding from it. He couldn't hide from it. And see, someone seeking to justify themselves, especially these grotesque free gracers, will come to the scripture and look for any kind of loophole they can muster to justify themselves. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done the done this evil in thy sight, that thou, the Lord, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and clear when thou judgest. Some of the most, besides the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church, uh, some of the most grotesque people that you will encounter that twist the scriptures to find a justification for themselves uh, and blur judgment are the free grace people. Okay? You guys are disgusting. You guys truly are disgusting. Okay? Alright? And Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Speaking of, let's read some of what these people omit. Okay, let's read what some of these people omit. Romans 3, we are going to be reading verses 3 on to verse 8. For what if some did not believe? And then these people see, see, it's only believe. It's Okay, stop. Number one, this is part of a section of Romans 3 that you guys avoid like the plague. Why? Why are you believing on Jesus? Hmm? Is it because it'll be truly a benefit to you? And yes, it is. But what leads you to that part? What leads you there? See, you you got some putts coming around saying just believe and receive. What is the focus? You. You. And you can see this uh, resonated in the easy believism adherence. In the way they conduct, the way they speak. It's all about them. Thou, O Lord. See, and that's why these guys omit. 
Romans 1, uh, Romans 3, up to verse 18 at the least. Why? Because it deals with personal accountability. They don't judge themselves. And also, too, in verse 3 here, in Proverbs 21, ties in with verse 7. Let's read that again. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Romans 3, verses 3 on to verse 8. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. God knows your heart. He sure does. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Only God could judge me. Okay, you know how God judges you? Through the scriptures. Okay? And because you judge yourself through that same standard, brother, that enables you to judge others by the same standard that you judge yourself. We'll touch on that a little bit later. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Hey, don't worry about it. You're, you just believe and receive. Just, you shouldn't do that, but don't worry about it. And see, the more you do, the greater his grace. What about thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God? See, see that, that's the level of the mind of these people, dear, dear brethren. It's like, okay, the more, and, and the Hasidim were doing this too. Uh, to try to get about their Mashiach to come, okay? Um, I forget the, uh, the logistics of that, but it's, it's like these guys, these free gracers, it's like, okay, now you should, not everybody does this, but some are like, you shouldn't do that, but don't worry. The more you do, the more grace, so the more evil you do, the better it is for you? That's essentially what these idiots are saying to you. That's what Christianity is saying to you, dear brethren. People, the brethren know this. Okay? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. Then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, and we saints don't say this, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. And let's read verse 9. What then, are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have, proved both, we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Are we better than they? Again, a free gracer, you scratch them. And it's like, I'm better than so-and-so. Ah, uh, yeah, you, you really think you are, don't you? You really think you are. Uh, let us do evil that good may come. And that's the mentality. No, don't worry about it. The more, the more you do, the more God's grace is for Think about how disgusting that is. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. You disgusting free gracers. You know nothing of the true grace of God. The grace that you guys purport and come up with is lasciviousness. It's not the true grace of God. It isn't. Because the true grace of God doesn't justify self. Which all of you do. That's all of you do. Period. And keep blabbing. You prove, prove yourself. Okay? Verse 4 in Proverbs 21. And high look and a proud heart. God knows my heart. I'm saying, I, I, I call on the name of the Lord. Well, sh shut up, you dear man. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. See, What's avoided by Christianity is brokenness, contrition, and fear. You, dear friend, can't have a genuine saving faith by His grace unless you go that way that leads to your death of self. And I'm going to say that 
and until you're blue in the face. Because that's what, and that's even seeming to be lacking nowadays in uh, some of the hmm, better, more dignified King James Bible believing Christianity, which in itself is just another Christian denomination. Okay? An high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. Look across the page. Proverbs 22, verses 4 and verse 8. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Fear of the Lord. We all make mistakes. Yes, we do. But see, if you fear the Lord, you I mean, especially in a public setting like a one of on YouTube or something like that, when you mess up publicly, you're like oh, and these Christians, they, they don't even flinch, people. The fear of the Lord is not in them. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Just like in Romans chapter 3 that these people avoid. Okay? Thorns and snares, which choke the word, and it become unfruitful. Why? Because they're too busy seeking to justify themselves. Uh, thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. Dispensational difference. But he that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. See, under the law, eternal security wasn't there. The death, burial, and resurrection wasn't there. They were not looking forward to the cross. They had no idea of it. Okay, we proved that in Wednesday's video, okay? That has been proven scripturally on countless uh, amount of times, but you're only as relevant as your latest video, okay? But thorns and snares are significant with things of the world, which our Lord gives an example in the parable about the, the, sower, the seed and the sower thing, okay? You can look that up on your own time. Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. Dispensational difference. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. We don't keep our soul today. It's interesting. The free gracer, Catholic, okay, basically, are keeping their souls by their belief. Because, like I've been saying to you all week, past two weeks actually, um, the, the free gracers' faith is in their faith, not upon the Lord Jesus Christ. It is, okay. This, uh, brother, brethren, this, like I've told you, this movement is growing, and it's not stopping. And where are the voices? Where are the voices? that are screaming out as the ship is going down. We're out there. But what does it affect? Fair to Midland. <laughs> but does that mean that we say nothing? Verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Father and mother are to bring up children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You have a whole nation in America as an example of what happens when that isn't present. Okay? Even those of you of other nations see that. Okay? And remember, America is a Christian nation, by the way. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> is America a follower of the way, the truth, and the life? Absolutely not. That's a Masonic document. Our founding fathers, as it were, were Freemasons. Okay? But, these people who are infants in faith, who are seeking... And they run into one of these just believe nitwit twits. And they're made twofold the child of hell more than the one than themselves. 
Why? Because the center of free grace is not the Lord, it's you. Look at how you look at how you go to justify yourself rather than the Lord. And look how some of these guys, as we addressed in Wednesday's video, will go to these lengths to show it's like, hey, look at me, I can rattle off scriptures that have nothing to do with the topic at hand. giving off this thing, this facade, this illusion. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. Ah, uh, where Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6, verses 7 on to verse 14. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Look at these guys, people. Look at the Christians. What are they sowing to? Sowing to the Spirit. What spirit? The capital S spirit that is our Lord? Or that spirit of Antichrist? They're sowing to themselves. They're reaping vanity. Okay? And if... For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the capital S Spirit, the Lord, shall of the Spirit, capital S, the Lord, reap life everlasting. And you know how that's done? In daily judgment of oneself through the scripture. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Oh, uh, verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Flesh. Anything that is not of the Lord Jesus Christ is carnal, fleshly, earthly, sensual, devilish. That includes every single denomination, denomination of Christianity. Every single denomination. You've made yourself of the number, dear friend. God help you. God help you. God help you. Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Need to remind myself of that sometimes too. <laughs> As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, and there is none good but who? Yourself, because you saved yourself without your own belief. You go to hell. Who's, what's good? God, the Lord, Jesus Christ. Every word of God is pure, good. How do we do good to every man? By giving them scripture, either by word, because faith cometh by hearing, or by deed in how we behave as ambassadors for Christ. Again, these disgusting free gracers on their ridiculous little panels, they justify the wicked, and they are giving an example of their God, that man of sin, the son of perdition, i.e. Satan. Okay? They are reflecting their God perfectly. Okay, we, we address this, we've been addressing this the past couple of weeks. It needs to be addressed. It needs to be hit hard. That the hope that one person Spirit, soul, and body may get out of it. If one person, and there has been that I know of, and some are on the way out, praise the Lord for that. Some are getting out of that. Praise the Lord. But um, if one person wakes up to the vile disgustingness of this thing called free grace movement and actually gets saved and start following the, following the Lord aright, then it's worth it then it's worth it. It's always worth it. But to know that, that at least one 
got out of that, then you can go to your grave knowing that, hey, the Lord be magnified. The Lord be magnified, not your ministry. <clears throat> anyway, we won't go there. As we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, by word or by deed, as ambassadors for Christ, of Christ, excuse me, by adhering to the scriptures, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. There are brethren out there who I don't like and don't like me, that I don't think we can stand to be around each other. But if a brother who I don't stand, can't stand and vice versa were to come to me genuinely it's like, hey, Brad, I need help, I would drop everything and we'd be there in a heartbeat. Okay? You see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. He's talking about the actual letters themselves. Book of Galatians is, Galatians is smaller than the book of Romans. Okay, He's not talking about the length of the epistle. All right? And the reason why I believe he's doing that is because Paul was pretty much blind. Okay? As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, put on the facade. They constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Now, Paul is making a reference unto Judaizers like Mark the Messenger, who say that, hey, you got to keep the commandments, and you got to keep the law today to stay saved and be right. No, you don't. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? No, you don't. All right? That's what specifically Paul is addressing. However, think about this. Rome comes along and offers you a whole book of laws that Satan came up with. Okay, and that bleeds through with the ecumenical mindset that is present in easy believism. You know, and the fact that they claim not to have any law or live lawlessly, uh, it's like they prove it. it's like, don't worry about it. You're just, you know, you shouldn't. Not everyone does that. You shouldn't, but don't worry about it. Just, you know, go about your way and have your cake and eat it too, you know. That's a form of legalism. It's works-based salvation, dear people. Why? Because the object of their faith is their faith. And again, it's our faith. <laughs> woo -hoo! Listen, you King James Bible-believing Christians. What's wrong with some of y'all? What's wrong with it? Because the guy looks like your hero? You need a hero, huh? If it's actually the Lord's faith in you... If it is, it's not. Okay, or else you're a Calvinistic robot. Why are you still singing? Hey, hey, Mr. Dudley do right. You never answered that! No, you diverted because I held a loaded gun to my head. You never answered it. You never did. If you tried to, I would have been informed. I don't watch you anymore. You're an idiot. But! Okay? Just keep that in mind, people. Just keep that in mind. It's by His grace through our faith. Okay? That doesn't mean that we save ourselves. No, but God is not holding it. You're going to the cross. Come on. Come on. You've got that doesn't work that way. Please understand that. Please understand that. When some... Uh, enough. Enough. Okay? And also you can tie into verse 12 about how they make them twofold more the child, fourfold uh, more the child of hell than themselves. Okay? When you come across one, somebody who has saved themselves by their own belief, and no matter what you can give them scripturally, and I've, I've dealt with this shoulder to shoulder, it's, it's like, okay, dude. Okay, dude. I, I'm I'm gonna leave you alone. And you know, like the one guy I talked to, uh, <laughs> he was very upset with me. Uh, you know, he he was one of the guys that's like, you think Jeffrey Dahmer is saved? You think I'm lost? It's like, yeah, I do, buddy. And I got a little confrontational with him, but he, he was he was one of those guys. You know, it's like I'm better than he is. It's like, dude, and he was over there, by the way, the Methodist. 
Dude, come on, dude. Come on. But like I said, I, I've, in, I've encountered these people. It's like, okay, okay. You don't want to hear it. Bye! Learn. <laughs> Learn when to walk away. Learn when to walk away. Learn when to walk away. And you might be saying, well, Brian, you're going after it. It's, this, is a, this is a deceitful, disgusting, satanic movement that the end justifies. This. What is the end that justifies the means? To damn you people to hell that get left behind. I don't think enough people are talking about this. They're more trying to um, uh, explain the book of Revelation. Okay? There's, in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, that's the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? We shouldn't be ignorant of it, but you can't, you can't make the book of Revelation the focal point for the saint today. You can't, because that's the time of Jacob's trouble. And the book of Revelation is self-explanatory and is chronological. Let's continue. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. It's like Jack Hiles would get everybody together and have pray this prayer, and then they prayed the prayer, and they they're like, you know, you talk about a wicked form of easy believism. You know, Stephen Anderson does that as well, and it would be like, bop, 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 uh, 400 people got saved today, and that's the easy believism, free grace mindset that they got today. Okay, not as brazenly obvious. I mean, because most people, it's like, what you just uttered some words, and that means you're saved. Well, yeah. Oh, that, okay, so uh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Ah, another form of easy believism, but turned to vocal. Woo! <laughs> All right. Verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And these need is like a bloodless cross, but they talk about the cross, yet they've never been there. Or they've been there, but they're like, I can do better, I can do better. And like I said, that, that video that the dear brother sent about that Kennedy guy is a perfect example. And uh, uh, brother, you see this? Can you write down? I'll write it down about uh, the, because this would be you know in Galatians talking about that video about self-justification you know uh, that would be good I just wrote it down there mind but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world death see the free grace are dude <laughs> come on they don't the free gracer is all about what can I get away with in the world and still be justified. And then when you have that kind of mentality, the end justifies the means. What's the end that justifies the means yourself? What's the ultimate end that justifies the means? That you people that get left behind, you're going to take that mark of the beast with the satanic just believe and receive thing, which is going to be there. Okay? Absolutely. All right? But see, right there, verse 14... Thou, O Lord, no justification of self. Okay? Back to Proverbs 21, verse 4. And I look, <clears throat> I said myself by my own belief, I'm a King James Bible believing Christian. All things are lawful for me. Hmm, <laughs> We won't go there. A high look and a proud heart 
and the plowing of the wicked of sin. We just read that. Verse 5. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but everyone that is hasty only to want. Hasty. Hasty. Easy believism. They, they call the faith that was once delivered onto the saints, they refer to it as hard believe, believe, uh, believism. Um, it breaks you. It's not difficult to do at all. But the hard part of it, they're technically, they're, uh, they're technically right. And, oh, they'll love that I just said that. What's hard about salvation is getting over you. Getting over you. Hey, if you're going to cut that piece, at least add what I just said. The hard part of salvation is you getting over yourself. Salvation is simple. Yes, it is. And it is easy. Yes, it is. The hard part is getting over yourself. And see, Satan has come up with a way to circumvent that by going over brokenness, contrition, and fear and going right to believe and making billions of false converts. Okay? And the thing, the object of faith, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 5, uh, uh, Hebrews 11, verses 1 on to verse 6, okay? Uh, salvation in and of itself Yes, it is easy. Yes, it is. But see, what's hard about it is you need to be broken. You need to die to yourself. You cannot save yourself. Okay? And when you got these guys that come along, repentance is a work. Prayer is a work. Okay, calling out that th those, see, brokenness, repentance, Okay, prayer is a work, they say. Calling on the name of the Lord and stuff like that. They call those necessities works. They don't like that. Because they're not truly broken. The cross is death, dear friend. The cross is death. You're nailed. You have no rights. You can't do anything. You're naked. You're, you know, you're, bored. you're bare to everything. And the fake don't like the cross. <laughs> Obviously. But Hebrews 11, diligent. See, the enemies are diligent to find things in Scripture to justify themselves. Saints. <laughs> and th this, this right here. Anyway, that, that stupid idiot Jack Smack ought to read this sometime. The, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. What does this mean? Okay. The one free grace guy that was on the channel in the gave that just, just that nonsense that he did, he at least admitted the, the obvious. That's a good start. That's a good start. When you got a free gracer who has to, when you corner them, uh, in the Garden of Eden, okay, there's only... Okay, Garden of Eden. Okay, they felt like it kicked out. Oh, you mean after that? The, the Garden of Eden is its own dispensation. After that is the, the, the you know, they say, shut up. Okay, but, uh, sorry, sorry, don't worry, whatever. But, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. They saw God in the Garden of Eden. Provable. Okay, approvable. The, uh, the kingdom of heaven, you know, the second coming of the Lord, every eye will see him. <laughs> He's going to be on a throne in Jerusalem, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to be physically on the earth. Okay, y'all got to go to him at the Feast of Tabernacles. It talks about that in either... Uh, Amos or Zechariah, I believe that's Zechariah, I will be corrected, uh, okay, uh, the kingdom of heaven, the thousand years of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
these guys tell you it's by grace through faith. <laughs> um, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In the patriarchal period, um, by the way, the Lord appeared to Abraham. Okay? Yes, he did. The three visitors. Which was not <laughs> the satanic trinity. The two were angels. The other one was a precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Uh, he, saw, he saw God. Okay? Abraham saw God. Okay? Under the law, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. He saw God. You know, also in the patriarchal period, uh, Jacob wrestled with God. Okay? Joshua saw God. The, the guy of the armies of the Lord of hosts. Okay? What? You know it was God because he said, take off your shoes from off your feet for the place you stand on is holy ground. Okay? All right? Okay? You, you could read, you got the law written for you. The law is not a faith. Okay? Genius! All right? People. People. And I'm sure these guys would even go, as these stupid idiots would be like, it's by grace of faith in eternity. I, I have not heard someone, one of these guys say that. That would be, that, that would be, that would be stupid. That it's stupid enough when these guys say it's by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. It's even stupider when they say it's by grace through faith during the Kingdom of Heaven. Okay. And see that right there debunks their lie because they go, it's like from beginning to end, it's by grace through faith. Uh, no, you can be proven wrong in two dispensations. So it's not one way the entire way. Okay. See, that, that, that's, what, that's what you guys... Avoid. You don't go after the issue. You find something like like me pointing a loaded gut to my head. They don't deal with the issue. They look for another thing. Okay? Let's continue now. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. What does that mean? We know that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, right there is giving credence to the scripture that you, how, how do we get here? In the beginning, God. Not millions and billions and years ago. Or uh, Genesis chapter, what is it, three or two? No, two, verse two. It's like the gap theory, you are stupid. Okay. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith. Now, look at this verse carefully. Okay, look at it carefully. Because they'll come to this and say, see, it's by faith through grace. Uh, during the patriarchal, uh, uh, patriarchal period, um, what was their faith in? It was not the death, burial, and resurrection, you idiot. It wasn't. Or else, or else, Paul's lying. Or why did Peter do what he did? Okay, come on. All right, but read this verse carefully because they come to this and say, by grace of faith, during the patriarchal period. It was similar. What was their faith in? The death? No, it wasn't. Or like I said, Paul was lying. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. How so? Offered one of the best, where the things of the ground, he just took him, you know, it was like, right? By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. See, in the patriarchal period, the, the dispensation right after the Garden of Eden is similar to today, but not identical. 
See, the fake grace idiot will try to tell you when they get cornered and they have to admit. And like I said, if they, if you can get one of these idiots to finally admit the obvious, okay, it wasn't by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Okay, it's not by grace through faith in the kingdom of heaven. It's like, okay, now let's talk a little bit. Okay, well, after that, it's by grace, mm, what was it in? By the death, burial, and resurrection. No, it wasn't, or else Paul is lying in Ephesians chapter 3. Okay, all right. There was, in the patriarchal period, an element of obedience that was required. Okay, the law wasn't written yet. No, it wasn't. But there was an element of required obedience, or else Noah, or else Abraham. Okay? By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead. Okay, let's continue. By faith, Enoch was translated, taken up. And see, a lot of people about the two witnesses like to say that it's Enoch and Elijah. Because Enoch didn't die a natural death. But uh, unless you read the book of Enoch, which is not scripture, which contradicts the canon of scripture. Okay, not yet. Not even the Roman Catholic Church considers the book of Enoch uh, a part of that. Not even they do. Uh, not to my knowledge. You never know with the Catholics. Okay. Uh, the book of Enoch is not authoritative. It is not true. It's a, it's a nice story. Okay. It is. It's not scripture. Okay. And you read Revelation 11. It's clearly Moses. Okay. The, the Hebraic Jews of today are not looking forward to Enoch, okay? They may talk about Enoch, sure, but it's Elijah. They're looking for Elijah. At every Passover dinner, they got, and they got Miriam's thing there, too. But at every Passover, every single one that I've been to, I've been to a few, um, they open up the door for Elijah to come into their Passover and take the seat. And what do the, the Hebraic Jews who reject the Lord, what do they hold to? Moshe. Moses. It's not Enoch. Okay? The two witnesses are Elijah and Moses. Not Enoch. Okay? Uh, we, um, somewhere I'll find it. Um, uh, witnesses. Uh, somewhere Enoch. That's what it was. Somewhere on the channel, there's a video where we address that. I'll put it in the description. I wrote it down. Okay? Let's continue. Okay, by, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And he walked with God. Okay? A thing of obedience was there, a requirement. Okay? The patriarchal period. It, it's called that because the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, were established in that dispensation. The Hebraic line. Hebrew is equated first with Abram, who would become Abraham. Okay? All right? And Abram, Abraham, was of Shem, not Ham or Japheth. Okay? All right. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. It was not found, because God had translated him for before. For his translation being taken up, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Okay? He walked with God. Okay? He was obedient unto God. Okay? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. 
For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. Proverbs 21, verse 6. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. The wages of sin is death. Christianity, free grace, seek to find ways to justify your carnality, sin. They do. They do. Listen to them speaking. And need I say anything more? Okay? But right here, the getting of treasures by a lying tongue. Oh, you are because you say you are, huh? Huh? You are because you say you are? You're, you're safe because you say you are. You are, you're safe because you think you are? Huh? Huh? <laughs> treasures, okay? Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses. 100 verse 7. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, the ministry of reconciliation, we're all in that, all us saints, okay? As we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Seek death. The wages of sin is death. Hey, at least Dade Murphy had the stones to say, and he's a self theist. He's crazy. Uh, but at least he had the stones to be like, yeah, I like my sin. I want my sin. I don't want the Christ you're offering. <laughs> Roll up another one, buddy. The free gracer, under this guise of religiosity, seek to justify themselves and their sin. Okay? But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. As ambassadors for Christ, the way you re, um, serve God reflects Him. Again, the free gracers in their live stream panels. That's not the true God these guys are representing people. Okay? Look across the page, if it is that way in your set of scriptures, to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verses 15 on to 17. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved, true saints, and in them that perish, fakes, Christians, free gracers. Okay? To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and unto the other, and to the other, excuse me, the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but, uh, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Again, we are ambassadors for Christ. The way we serve him reflects him. Yeah, I, I sometimes, yeah, I'll give you that. Okay, I do, I'll give you that. All right, but see, I serve the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. And I can't justify myself, but I justify God. And any true saint will do that sooner or later. Whereas the false, keep going round and round and round and round and round. All things are lawful for you. Shh. Shh. Verse 3 uh, and chapter 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds 
of them which believe not. Says minds, because what does Satan uh, promise in the Garden of Eden? You do contrary to what God says, circumvents brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord, calling upon his name, calling upon his name, calling out to the Lord in brokenness, contrition, and fear is something that just comes. Okay? It just, you, see, you guys don't understand that because you're not saved. You're not broken. Okay? You don't get it. And you never will, probably, most of you. The impossible is possible with God. But, you know, when you keep going around and around and around trying to defend yourself instead of God, uh, you're in a bad place. Okay? Okay? But it's just the minds. Satan says in God, hold your place. Hold your place. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis, by the way, dear friend, means beginning. Okay? Just so you know. And you, how, you, how can you prove that? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. The third word in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Oh, verses 4 and 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Meaning, if you do contrary to what God said. God, God okay. Glad uh, at least, uh, you know, the one free grace devil was uh, there. There's a personal dig at you, okay? But anyway, at least the one guy was like, okay, yeah, it was works in the Garden of Eden. God said, don't eat that. Clear condition. Don't do that. They did it. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, do contrary to what God said, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So, their eyes are open, but their minds are blinded. In whom the God of this world, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Oh, they say they believe! Which Jesus do you believe in? I almost did that. The bird, I almost did. <laughs> that would be bad. One God in three persons, huh? The one in the middle? A God who has no requirements? No requirements? Who loves you unconditionally? The lost sinner who rejects him? That's not God. That's not God. That's not God. You don't... Trinitarian, free gracer. You don't believe in the real God. You don't. I, I'm sorry. I am. I, I, I'm legitimately sorry. I'm. I mean, the Trinity is disgusting. You know where I stand on that. I'm. I. There you go. Okay, um, I mean, there are a lot of sincere people who are in this free, disgusting free grace movement. There are, but you're, you save yourself, and the Jesus you believe in is not the real Jesus. And that's sad. That is sad. Okay? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. And see, when you come around preaching just believe, Believe in what? Death, burial, resurrection? Okay? But what is the reason? What is the source that you're going after? It's you. When, If I were to come to you and say, just believe and receive, 
It would be based on you just believing and you just receiving. Why are you doing that? See, if you omit brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord, and in that you call upon his name, those requirements, and they get killed. What if they can't call? What if that, that, that? Shut up. Okay? Those are requirements. Brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord are requirements. But when you omit that and say, just believe and receive, you are the one. It's all you. It's about you. It's, it's yourself. We saints, for we preach not ourselves, you just want, see, the object of your faith is your faith. It is. You claim it's in the death, burial, and resurrection. But see, you scratch them and it's all about you. You're better than so-and-so. Okay? You're better than so-and-so. And you claim to believe in Jesus, the one who is the third in the satanic trinity. It's not the real God. There are a lot of these guys who I wish would be my uh, be our brothers. I really do. Uh, they would make fine brethren. But as long as they are all about themselves and puffed up in themselves without true brokenness or contrition, for God who hath commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure, what is the treasure? Our Lord Jesus Christ in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You are because you say you are. You are, you think therefore you are. And notice, too, in uh, verse, what is that, 6 in Proverbs 21. Okay, the getting of treasures by a lying tongue. Just believe and receive. Or just say, just say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Okay? Y'all are omitting Brokenness, contrition, and fear. And you call the step of, and it's not a step one, step two, step three, but it is a process. The breaking thing is a process. See, you guys don't know that because you've never been truly broken. Okay? And when you see someone going through that stage, you know it. But the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity uh, is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. To and fro. To and fro. Uh, Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. Verses 33 unto 36. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Dispensational difference. All they that hate me love, love death. And the wages of sin is death. Free gracers love sin. <laughs> if you can stomach it, watch, listen to some of their live streams. Okay? Come on. All right, but to and fro. To and fro. Now, a saint, you saints, your ear like to and fro, to and fro. What's with this to and fro thing? Job. That's right, brother. Job chapter 1, sister, that's right. Who's notorious for walking to and fro? Yes, the Lord is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. What's that idiot's name? Eric. Okay. 
The Lord Jesus Christ knows everything, Eric. Okay? You idiot? Alright? Anyway, who's notorious for walking to and fro? Oh, Job chapter 1, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. To and fro is first mentioned there. To and fro. And not afro there. Okay? Uh, verse 2, uh, verse 2 in chapter 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24. One verse. Verse 20. Uh, actually, hmm, let's read verses 16 on to verse 21. From the utmost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee. O inhabitants of the earth, and you guys, you free gracers, you Christians, your wisdom is earthly, sensual, devilish. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noises of fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. Talks about how, you know, uh, people are snared by the devil at his will because the devil walketh about as a roaring lion, lion seeking whom he may devour. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. Hmm. And shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. And it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high. And the kings of the earth upon the earth. <laughs> Isaiah 29. Verses 9 and 10. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. Free gracers. Christianity in a whole. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. But yet, they're drunken by the wine that Rome offers them. What does this mean? For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. And, and let's read verse 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And continue on to read that. Let's read verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. See, these guys can glaze over the scripture and give countless verses which they claim to prove something which it doesn't. But see, they can't go, they have no deepness of earth. Why? Because the spirit of truth that will lead and guide into all truth is not there. So they have to replace it with big, fancy, schmancy sounding words. And they just throw out scriptures that are so voluminous that most people are not going to take the time. But they're going to be like, 
It, it's the same mentality as the kid over there who tried to glaze me over with his, well, the Greek and, you know, the Catholic tradition and his fancy schmancy rhetoric. It's the same principle. Trying to glaze, look at how impressive I am because I got this big, long, no, no. See, that's to replace something that isn't there. See how that works? See how that works? See how that works? And Luke 16, one verse. <laughs> Luke 16, one verse. One verse. Verse 15. Free grace, Christianity in its whole. Even the denomination of King James Bible believe in Christianity. Well, thanks a lot for you. Shh. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts. Yeah. Yeah. For that which is highly esteemed among men in this is an abomination in the sight of God. And of course, right away, the follow-up to that is John, thank you, Lord. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, not 6. Search the scriptures, verse 39 on to 47, to the end of the chapter. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. How can someone read the scriptures daily, the authorized version, and not still not be saved? These devils, they believe this is truth, but see, their faith is something of their own mind. They haven't been broken. There's no contrition. There's no fear of the Lord. So they believe it, the scriptures, for the fact that it is truth. But that truth, that love of the truth. See, see, these guys, these devils, all of them. Thou, you know, thou believest there is one God. Thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. They, they, it's like, you know, Steve Anderson, perfect example. It's like, this is the word of God. Every word of God is true. Yes. Yes, it is. But see, they have not a love. Of the truth. See? That's the difference. That's the difference. Jesus Christ, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Him. He is the truth. Sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy word, lowercase w, is truth. Do you love the truth? Uh, Isaiah 29, go back there. Come on. Come on. You, you say! There, Mr. Christian, Mr. Free Gracer. You love the truth, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Verse uh, 13 in Isaiah 29. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. And as far as God shutting their eyes, these guys have made the choice. Like Pharaoh. Pharaoh believed in his head that he is his own God anyway. So God, you know, was like, didn't do it. You just helped him along. Free gracers would believe they are their own God anyway. Because they save themselves by their own belief. But some of them search the scriptures. And like I said, you know, even Stephen Anderson was like, this is the perfect and errant, given by inspiration, word of God. And every word of God is true. Amen. But do you have a love of the truth? Come here. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. That love of the truth begins in your search uh, when you begin... You go the way of the cross, and the Lord starts to kill you, your self-righteousness through the scriptures. But then, he is the way, the truth, and the life. 
He seals you with himself. The Lord is in you. See, the love of the truth is not there in Christianity or in the free grace. And the love of the truth that is in one who's slowly getting out of that, that's a good thing. Keep doing that. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Verse 41 in John 5. I receive not honor from men. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name. Jehovah saves. Jesus. Christ. The anointed one. Okay? And ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Calvin, Luther, Buckman, Hiles. Your own personal name, whatever it is. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. He shall be as God's. How can ye believe, which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? And now see, the Lord uplifts the scriptures here. Okay? Do you believe what you are reading? You believe it is truth, but do you have a love of the truth? The devils believe every word of this, but they have not a love of the truth, because this truth condemns them. And amen. This truth condemns me. But I am saved by His grace through my faith. See, you free gracers have no concept of what true saving grace is. Because you use the grace that you purport as a license to justify yourself. <laughs> you prove it with every time you open up your mouth. How can ye believe? How can ye believe? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses in whom ye trust. He's making reference to the Old Testament scriptures. He's uplifting the scriptures. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Again, they know that this is truth. They do. But do they have that love of the truth? True belief? No. No. No, you don't. No, you don't, my friend. No, you don't. Now, verse 7 in Proverbs 21. With, now, let's read verse 3 again. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And again, the ridiculous thing of these guys, don't judge me, don't judge me. You can't judge me. God can, is the only one to judge me. <clears throat> the robbery of the wicked shall destroy them. Why? Why? Because they refuse to do judgment. John 10. They refuse to do judgment. Oh, some of you will attest. Uh, they, they judge me pretty hard, I know. But see, here, and, and, and brother, judging of oneself is a daily thing. There are some out there who will tell you that, okay, yes, you are to judge yourself according to the scriptures first, but they treat it with a one and done thing. No, 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 no. It's a daily, this is a daily walk with the Lord, okay? We're eternally secure, but see, every single day you are to judge yourself according to the scriptures. And see, here, and brother, here's the thing you got to get through your head, okay? 
because you are actively judging yourself upon this perfect standard of Scripture, yourself first, hence, because you are doing that, that enables you to judge others by the same standard that you are judging yourself first by. Okay? You've made a, uh, you've made a fool of yourself. Hi! Hi! We got jackets for that club. Okay, you, 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 you've done things that you shouldn't have done. Hi! Okay, hi! But see, you got to keep going forward, man. Touch on that in a, bit, a minute, okay? Touch on that in a minute. But look at looking at verse 7 again in Proverbs 21. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them. Why? Because they refuse to do judgment. John chapter 10, just verse 1 to start. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Christianity climbs up some other way. Free grace climbs up some other way. You're thieves and robbers. And what does our text in uh, chapter 21, Proverbs 7 say? The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them. How? Oh, you free grace idiots. You devils. Okay? You are going to be horribly surprised when the body of Christ is redeemed and you're left behind. And then you see on the news this guy looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus coming out of nowhere. The dispensation has changed. It is now by faith and works. But see, in Revelation, the book of Revelation, we have hope that, uh, meaning that there's going to be a great number of people killed in the very beginning. I believe it's going to be you people who have been deceived by these free grace devils who get left behind and then you recognize and realize we've been wrong all along and you know and hey in the time of Jacob's trouble it's faith and works you're going to die while well, as just believe and receive okay and you also got to remember too that the law is going to return during the time of Jacob's trouble which is the laws for the Jews Remember that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a Hebraic Jew. But at midway during the time of Jacob's trouble, that man of sin, the son of perdition, looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus, I believe, is going to walk into that third rebuilt temple saying, I am. And you know what? The disciples of that man of sin, the son of perdition, I am convinced of this, and you guys left behind, you will see, he's going to refer to you as Christians. See, Satan is setting this whole, whole, whole system up, like we talked about on Wednesday. Okay, but let's continue in John. Okay, you're thieves and robbers. John 10, now 7 on verse 13. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, <laughs> I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in, saved, and out, reference unto the redemption of the purchased possession, and find pasture. I am the door. Hey, 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 bloke. You know your little emoji thing that you got on your channel still says boot the door? You idiot. Jesus is the door. You ought to change that. <laughs> Just saying. But then again, the, nobody listens to you anyway. With your subscribers that you bought. Right. Anyway. I am the door. Jesus Christ is the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal. And to kill and to destroy. I am... Brother, I am circle that. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. Good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. 
But he that is an hireling like the free gracers, Christianity in general, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth them. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. These people don't care about you. They just care about you in the respect that it makes them look good, like we already addressed in other scriptures. Okay? Uh, first Corinthians, <laughs> okay, and the, the thing about judgment again, that, that, that is always, that always, the judgment thing, okay, these guys, verse 7 in Proverbs 21, the robbery of the wicked shall destroy them, yes it will, because they refuse to do judgment, first Corinthians chapter 6, okay, first Corinthians chapter 6, okay, Verses 1 on to verse 6. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. God judges you through the scriptures. And because you judge yourself through that standard of scripture right there, that means that you, because you judge yourself by this, are able to judge... Brother, remember that. Remember that. Okay? Don't be deceived by these people who are not your friends. Please. If they were, they'd be encouraging you. <laughs> you can't judge me. <laughs> Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust, not before the saints? Do ye not, not know that the saints shall judge the world. How we do how we do that? Scripture. And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? You know, people, when you run into, like I've told you countless times, and I will tell you countless times, when you encounter someone saying, don't judge me, they're seeking to justify sin themselves. Okay? Take them here. And if they go to 1 Corinthians 4, that's when, you know, point out to verse 5, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, meaning get saved, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Verse 5 tells you that he's talking about get, getting saved. Okay? Very easy to debunk. But see, they refuse to do judge. Oh, they judge others! Oh! But hey, they like to point out everybody else, right? Turn it back on them, and then, ah, don't judge me. God knows my heart, don't judge me. <laughs> Unless they're a novice, whenever you encounter anyone saying, don't judge me, they're not saved. Unless they're a novice, okay, unless you're a saint going to another saint who's a vegetarian and you're like, you know, you know, you shouldn't be eating that crazy cheeseburger and the shellfish and the pork chop on there. Don't judge me, dude. That, and that, that's where that's justified. Okay? That. These guys don't do it like that. Okay? They say don't judge me because they're hiding sin. Okay? Okay? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more Things that pertain to this life. You encounter, you know, hey, hey Dave, you lovely individual, you watching me still? Okay? <laughs> you want to throw a wrench at a Christian? Take him here. Seriously. Okay? <laughs> if then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life. 
judgments of things pertaining to this life. Okay? Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, that be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge which are least esteemed in the church. The body, not a stupid building. Okay? I speak to your shame. Don't judge. You can't judge me. Shame. It's like not lightly dividing the word of truth. God's ashamed of you. If you say it's the same from beginning to end and it all blends together, God's ashamed of you. You don't judge according to the perfect standard yourself and others. Shame on you. <laughs> oh. oh, it gets me going every time, man. Every time. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. Ambassadors of Christ, the way you serve him reflects him. But brother goeth the law but with brother, and that before the unbelievers. When the lost can judge you Christians, and they're usually right. Because it's the fulfillment in Romans chapter 2. The pot calling the kettle black. Okay? Man can't judge rightly by himself. Even, you know, the spirit of truth will lead you and guide you into all truth. You have enough judgment to know that what you are doing is wrong. But you so, so many of you stop there. Man's judgment in and of itself is not a right. Why? Because ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You need God to truly know what is good and what is evil. Look at what's going on today. I rest my case. Okay? All right? And 1 Peter chapter 4. Okay? Now, and this is an aspect that many, it seems also within King James Bible believing Christianity, uh, that people don't seem to do. We are to judge other people by the standard which 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 17 on to verse 19. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. It's not a building. You and I saints, we are of the Lord's house. Okay? That's what that means. Not a physical temple, not a building, but we are of Him. That's what that means. And if, and if it first begin at us, look at this verse. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Look at that, don't look at me, look at that verse. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. You judge yourself first. Yes, you do. This is, that's how this works, brother, sister. Okay? And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And how will they know that unless a preacher is sent to them? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The free grace adherent to try to debunk stupidly, uh, Romans chapter 10, they always point to verse 14. It's like, it says believe, and they, they center everything about the actual word believe, but what that's talking about is someone, a saint, an ambassador for Christ, being sent on to them preaching the gospel. That's what that's talking about, okay, idiot? Okay? Let's continue. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? 
Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. See, and, that, and that's why in the beginning, God, you flop out of bed. Lord, <laughs> thank you. You've given me today. Search the scriptures. 2 Corinthians 13. 2 Corinthians 13. So you're, you're judging yourself by the scripture first. Good. And because you are in the process, that's a daily thing. That's an ongoing thing. It's not salvific. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. But see, there are those out there, well, I did that. One and done. No. Okay. You continually judge to see yourself according to the perfect standard. Am I doing right? Am I doing what you... This is the living word. This, is a, this book is alive because the spirit of truth that will lead you and guide you into all truth boom, speaks to you through it. it. Speaks to me. Not audibly, you crazy Pentecostal. But he, he talks to me through this. He talks to the saint through this. Okay, This is how he communicates to us. Through his word. Okay, And if you're not reading it daily, if you're not in it daily, are well, you going off of memory? Been there, done that? Some of you are. Some of you are. Some of you are avoiding it because you know that he's going to tear your hide off. Again, I'll bring up the farmer guy with his family. All the, all the responsibilities that he had to do, yet he woke up at, you know, earlier than anyone to at least dedicate 45 minutes of prayer and reading some scripture unto the Lord before he took care of the cows, before he got his kids. I mean, did send his kids to school. But, I mean, okay, a farmer on a farm like that had time enough to give that time unto the Lord in the scripture and prayer. What are you, what are you so busy doing, huh? Are you busy? You're up late watching them videos, huh? Yeah, you're up late watching movies. You know you shouldn't. Listening to things you shouldn't. But your finger is going to go and play, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, boy. Yeah. A lot of the saints, unfortunately, who have, you know, kind of lax, don't... See, the Lord shows his love to those who are his by his chastisement. Right? Chastisement hurts. And the actual process of being chastised, you don't see. But the peaceable fruits of that chastisement, that's the fruit that we judge. And that can be faked to a degree. To a degree. But the long-lasting effect is evident. You saints know what I'm talking about. 2 Corinthians 13, verses 5 on verse 8. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. See, Paul was against sin. But then again, Romans chapter 7, he's like, I can't stop sinning. Okay, okay yeah, I can't. And again, dude, if anyone comes around, you got to stop sinning. Just ignore them. They're, they're, they're stupid. Okay, Paul missed the memo. Okay? Now, I pray, now I pray that, now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. Reprobates unto who? The world. Christianity. Okay? But we can do nothing against the truth for the truth. And what I was touching on, okay, see, it's a daily examination. It hurts. Oh, praise the Lord, it hurts. But see, if you neglect daily examination of yourself, okay? And it's not a salvific thing. Okay, you come the way of the cross and the Lord saves you, you're sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. The way you serve Christ reflects Him. 
Your walk reflects him. Okay? And as we read in Romans chapter 12, who are we proving this to? Ourselves? Or to those to whom we are examples unto? In samples unto? Philippians 3, 13 and 14. And brother, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We've messed up. We've sinned. We've all, we all fall short of the glory of God. Yes, we do. Okay? You made a, made a uh, fool of yourself. You've said things you shouldn't have said. You're daily examining yourself in the scriptures. Move forward. But see, the enemy, especially those of the free grace community, Christianity, with the, don't judge me, hey, look at what you did. They want to keep you here. They want to keep you shackled in the past. They do. They want you to, you did this, you did this. I got the video evidence. I recorded our conversation, Jesuit tactic there. Um, I recorded it. I got the evidence. It's like, that's yesterday. I, I've been forgiven for that. And see, they use that to bait you and to rub it in your face and also to shame you. They do. To sling mud at you. Yes, they do. See, that's, that's what the devil does. That's what the devil does. And his ministers of righteousness do. Okay, that's what they do. They want to keep you here. Now, there are things that need to be considered, yes. Okay, maybe there are certain things we shouldn't be doing. <laughs> okay, maybe, okay, whatever it is, whatever it is. Okay, but here's the thing. You've repented. Okay, you're examining yourself daily, seeking to walk according to his precepts. Rightly divided. Okay? You're seeking to align your life with the way our Lord would have you to do. You're judging yourself every single day. Hence, again, because you are doing that according to the perfect standard, you can take this very perfect standard. It's like, well, wait a minute. What, you're, what about you? Well, I'm forgiven for that. And they keep bringing it up. Don't even, don't even let it phase you. It's like, dude, that's what I did. Okay, that's not right now. Okay? All right? What happened back there, I can't change. I can't. I did what I did. I've asked for forgiveness. The Lord forgave me. I, I'm, I'm sealed, okay? I mess up. I sin. The Lord forgives me. I'm moving forward, Jack. With every pun intended. I'm moving forward, Mr. Hidden in Lucifer's loins, who is an expert at trying to keep people pinned down in past failures, while never admitting or acknowledging the ones that he does himself every day, because he's not safe. <laughs> I don't hate you. I despise you. Anyway. Move forward. And this doesn't mean you be flippant, like the free gracer. There is a time and a place for everything. Okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, very quickly. Okay? Very quickly, let's touch on this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Here, here's an example of modern day Christendom. Okay? Of this mentality of the, don't judge me. Here it is in scripture. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 1 and 2. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. It wasn't his mother or also would have said that. His stepmother. So a guy was having physical relations betting his father's wife, his stepmother. Not named among the Gentiles. Lost people seeing how some of these free gracers behave or Christians behave, it's like, Dude, you're supposed to be different than I am, but you're worse than I am. 
But what do they say? And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. What's being said here? Puffed up. We're not judging you. This is when you need to come to church, right? We're not judging you. We're not. No. No, you're having sexual relations with your stepmother. No, that's when you need to come to us. We're to hey, what about you? What about you? See, that, that, that's what's going on there, dude. Okay? That is what's happening today. And what does Paul say? Let's read on to verse 6. For I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already. Here's that thing about judgment. They, the Christianity, free gracers, they judge others. They sure do. But when it comes to them, the robbery of the wicked shall destroy them. Why? Because they refuse to do judgment. For, for I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit, lowercase s, may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Because the capital S spirit, who is the Lord, doesn't need to be saved. You are a spirit, soul, and body. It's like God is. But see, God never sinned. We sin every day. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? A little won't hurt. Got to make a living. You know, Ruckman, one of the good things that he said. Got a little don't hurt. Got to make a living. I know when to quit. Yeah. Now up the dosage, man. And see, how, 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 how do we, how do we do this? How do we judge ourselves? Acts chapter 17, just the one verse. And it's funny, a devil will bring up, well, they were lost. The Bereans were lost. And they had more sense than most of you to at least search the scriptures. That's a stupid argument, man. Acts 17, 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. They wanted truth. And searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Of course, the Lord was someone who really wants the truth, wants to know the Lord, wants to get, you know, get saved by the Lord. Where do you go to? Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. I love this one. Love this one. Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. Come on. It's getting spicy in here. Isaiah 34. Wish it could get us another fan. Verses 16 on to verse 17. Seek ye out of the book, wait, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Ooh. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his lowercase s spirit it hath gathered them. And he cast a lot for them. And his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see what's uh, something you got to remember. Um, these people who have a problem with judgment, 
Okay? 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they'd no doubt, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. And 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, that is not a coincidence, by the way. That is not a coincidence. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. 2 Timothy 2, 19, 1 John 2, 19, they coincide. That's beautiful. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, and no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid. That's Jesus Christ. Which one? <laughs> Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Seal unto the day of redemption, the truly saved saint. The Lord knoweth none that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Christ means anointed one, nameth the name of Jesus. That is not credence to be calling yourself a Christian. No. We won't go off on that. But the Lord knows who are his. Why? Because we're sealed. These guys, Christianity in a whole, and uh, the free gracers, they're not sealed, they're not saved. And while we're here, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 12. At least remember the address. For the word of God is quick, alive, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the, to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And see, when you're judging yourself first, the Lord will even reveal this unto you. Hence, because you are judging yourself first, you are able to judge others. And don't let anyone deceive you elsewise. Okay? Or else you can become unuseful. Now go back to Proverbs 21 verses 27 on to the close. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? Proverbs 23, verse 7. <laughs> let, let, let's, let's, let's read verses 6 and on to verse 9. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. I'm saved because I'm just, I am just just believe. I can say something that me proves I, I'm saved. <laughs> yeah. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up. Lose thy sweet words. Speak not in the ears of a fool, one who says in his heart there is no God, for he will despise the wisdom, the fear of the Lord, of the words, of thy words. Because we are to speak his words, not philosophy, which all those stupid free gracers do. Okay? Proverbs 28. <laughs> As he thinketh in his heart. Proverbs 28, verse 26. Of 25 and 26. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up, up strife. I just believe and receive. I, God knows my heart. I believe in my heart. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. <laughs> Ah, okay. 
Verse 28. A false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. Now we addressed this in Wednesday's video. You know, the difference between, you know, Paul speaking lots of words, preaching the word of God, when some idiot comes along just blabbing things, fools known by multitude of words. Go to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Okay, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Luke chapter 8, verses 16 on to verse 18. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. They went out from us, but they were not all, all of us. But they went out from us that they might be made manifest. But they were not all of us. I just bradized that. Neither anything hid that shall not be known to come abroad. Uh, excuse me. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. <clears throat> Take heed, therefore, how you hear. For whosoever hath, him shall be given. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. You guys save yourself by your own belief. What you seemeth to have. Oh, the loss that you guys are going to endure. Proverbs 21, picking up at verse 29. A wicked man hardeneth his face. Because they don't want to hear it. But as for the upright, he directeth his way. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. There isn't. Even though Satan has offered you so many other things contrary to the Lord. The horse, excuse me, is prepared against the day of battle. The horse. But safety is of the Lord. Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Then we'll be done. The horse. The horse. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Go the way of the cross. Come. Let us reason together. It's time for you to wake up. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit is no guile, like Christianity and free gracers. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me, my moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Selah. What is he talking about? Going to the Lord. Calling upon the name of the Lord. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. See, when the Lord breaks you, you can't wait to, you can't, so save me! And only lost people don't get that. Only religious Christians, free gracers, don't get that. Why? Because it's all about them. They're, they are, they are self-theists. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. But they say prayers will, prayers will work. How stupid. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. And you read in uh, Revelation 17 verse 15 
about how waters are likened unto people, nations, and stuff like that. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Selah. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. How does he do that? Scripture. <laughs> Be not as the horse, or as the mule. Um, I forget which one it is, but uh, the mule and the ass, one is a male and one is a female. Okay? I think the ass was female and the, you know, mule is male. I mean, there's a distinction in, you know, you know, ass, donkey. Well, it's used in scripture as one denoting the male and the female. Okay? Be ye not as the horse, or as the mule which have no understanding, departing from evil. They, you know, you're reading Job. Uh, the horse laughs at the shaking of the fear of the spear. He's like, ha ha! And runs into the battle. Whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. See, you're supposed to grow up. You're supposed to press forward. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. Oh, yeah. But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, ye righteous. Uh, excuse me. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous. And shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Upright in heart, and how is that? When your heart belongs to the Lord. That is going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Uh, Lord willing, got a lot of videos coming. Uh, Lord willing. Um, like I said, uh, our uh, beloved brother um, sent a video <laughs> which will be addressed. Um, which, will, you know, next week or maybe this weekend. We'll see. I, I'm not, this isn't this isn't my ministry. God forbid. God forbid. So, thank you for watching this if you do. Please keep us in your prayers and please pray for one another. Uh, please continue. To, for example, our dear brother Jeff Jones, please continue to keep that man in your prayers. Even so, come Lord Jesus. We love you. Thank you. See you in the next video.